All right, so let's take a look at this new formulation that I'm going to present. So we've seen already uh, Euler's formula, uh, we've seen Rankine's formula, and then we've seen also a little bit about what happens when we have a, an eccentrically applied load on the column. So and this, this is the time, or this is kind of the case that we're going to present here for Johnson's parabolic formula. And the principle of, of this uh, formulation, it, it lays also as, you know, for rankings in, in sort of a way. So we have here that, you know, when we have, we're seeing this diagram, we have uh, Euler's formula. And I mentioned in the past that, you know, when you do these uh, experiments, you know, to determine where exactly the column is going to fail according to property materials and slenderness, so you, you might find that, you know, the, the failure points are somewhere around kind of these places here, way below or below, you know, Euler's typical formulation and or uh, and a little bit above of the you know, rankings formulation. So what Johnson's did, uh, taking experiments data, was to fit a parable from the starting point of the yield strength, yield strength of the material until it was tangent to the Euler, let's say, formula or curve here. So you see that this green, li this green line here is kind of, let's say, the parable. And the touching point with the Euler's curve, uh, that is called transition point, uh, determines, you know, a very interesting, let's say, phenomena. And what is going to happen is that, you know, in the past I've talked, if, yeah, I have talked about, you know, short columns and long columns. In this time, type, you know, maybe we're not going to talk about short columns or long columns, but we're going to talk about when to use Johnson's approach and when to use Euler's approach, because this is one of the most widely uh, used methods to, let's say, to design columns. It's a combination of two, let's say, formulations that you can find in the textbooks as, for example, Euler, Johnson, formula or approach. So this combination of approach is pretty interesting. So first, the, the, the curve or the formula equation to describe this parable here is, you know, defined by this. And again, this is taking, you know, this is a kind of resulting from a fitting process of, of the, the series of test points occurred in kind of in this region and then taking as an initial point the yield strength of the material and then, you know, one of the points would be the touching, the tangent point touching to the Euler's curve here. Now, having this curve here, uh, the transition point is determined by this relationship. So the slenderness at which the Johnson's, Johnson's formula equals Euler's formula is determined by this relationship. So it's pretty simple. So then you're going to have a formula or, or a curve in the end that is going to be a combination of what's happening before the transition point and what's happening after the transition point. If I go to the next slide then, it's, kind of, it's going to show a little bit on how would be the procedure to then calculate, uh, let's say, design the maximum or, or determine or calculate the maximum uh, permissible load on the column. So first, for sure, you have to start with the you know, material modulus of elasticity, E, uh, the length of the column, you know, cross-section and conditions, if they are pinned, they are fixed or, you know, it's fixed, fixed free or, you know, depending on the combination of those, then you're going to find out if kind of, uh, where's that transition point? So the one that we make kind of the tangent point where Johnson's formula touches, you know, or equals Euler's formula. Then you're going to find the slenderness of your column. And this slenderness, well, you, know, you calculate it with, you know, the, the gyration ratio here, which is you have to take into account what's the most probable, let's say, axis that buckling might occur there. So you find the uh, slenderness of the column after you have found the slender, the point of transition, the slenderness where the transition is happening, you compare both of them. And if it happens that the slenderness of the column is to the left of the transition point, you are going to use Johnson's formula. If it happens that the, the slenderness of the column is to the right of the transition point, well, you will use Euler. And then after having this critical load calculated then, or the book, kind of, yeah, actual load, uh, uh, yeah, booking load, critical load, then you can calculate, for example, the safety factor. So if I come back here, that would be equivalent to say kind of that we, we are going to use only, only, for example, from this point to the left, we're going to use this Johnson's parabolic formula here to try to draw it, you know, as close as possible. And then from 
the transition point to the right, we will use what is, you know, Euler's formula. We repeat this a little bit well better. So that you're going to have this kind of nice, let's say, curve that goes from the yield strength of the material. Then if it's a ductile material, then you're, it's most probable that the compressive strength, yield strength is equal to the tension or tensile yield strength. And well, if it's kind of a cast or a yeah, cast iron or a brittle material, then they might be different. But this kind of, a, this shows a nice transition from what are called, you know, short columns to long columns. And uh, definitely we cannot use Johnson's paragoric formula to, you know, after the transition point because it doesn't meet somehow the, the fitting process of the test uh, results. So this is kind of ending. And, and again, this is one of the most uh, widely used uh, formulations, the Euler Johnson's uh, formulation or approach, where you are going to have a combination of two things, you know, Euler for long columns, let's put it in that way, and then Johnson's for, you know, short and intermediate columns. Pretty nice. And, and look at this that, you know, I've noticed that remember in the previous example where Johnson, you know, cut this, uh, let's say, assumption that before this point here, you were going to, or you're going, you were going to notice that the column most probably would fail by crushing then, and this was about 80, these uh, slenderness here. So for the Euler's Johnson's approach, you know, this is way you know, larger than this one here. And, you know, this uh, loss loses kind of its meaning at all. So we ended up with this yellow line or yellow curve here. And it's pretty nice. And we're going to see it in many places that uh, this is one of the most widely used and more most accept accepted use. And if you see, for example, uh, standards or codes where, you know, uh, for a type of material, the buckling load or, yeah, the buckle or the permissible load is plotted then you know you're going to see that it has some more or less this kind of shape there just to summarize then well uh, the procedures here is pretty clear so it's just a decision point that you have to say well if your column is after the transition point you know use Euler if it's before the transition point then use Johnson and you know and then in the end if you want to determine what's your safety factor what's your let's say play range you know with the with the, with the buckling load or the permissible load that you have in your design then you can calculate this this safety factor Thanks again for attending, and uh, I think uh, we will discuss in another video about uh, possible failure causes for columns. You know, it's, it's pretty also interesting to know to see why columns fail.